it's well known that European colonial powers haven't left the best legacy in the lands they ruled over. Some of the most heinous crimes known to man were inflicted upon African people. And in this video, we'll take a look at the top 5 worst colonial atrocities that happened in Africa. On May 8, 1945, the town of Satif in eastern Algeria brimmed with hope and celebration as thousands of native Algerians commemorated Germany's surrender and the end of World War II in Europe. However, what was meant to be a joyous occasion soon escalated into a tragic event that scarred the Algerian people. The parade, attended by Algerian veterans returning from the front lines, evoked feelings of national pride and a demand for equality, provoking fear and anger among French settlers and police. Calls for equality, an end to occupation, and the release of political prisoners further fueled tensions. On Algerians carrying placards expressing their demands refused to discard them, French settlers and police opened fire, leading to widespread rioting and subsequent attacks on French settlers in the surrounding countryside, resulting in approximately 100 deaths. In the aftermath, General Charles de Gaulle, the head of the French government, authorized the use of extreme measures to restore order in Algeria. French military forces responded with disproportionate brutality, launching a campaign of collective punishment. French battleships bombarded native Algerian neighborhoods in Satif and its vicinity, while dive bombers obliterated more than 40 Algerian villages. The repression extended to rural communities suspected of involvement in the unrest where thousands of Algerians were brutally executed by the French soldiers. Algerian men were subjugated to degrading rituals, forced to kneel in front of the French flag and proclaim their inferiority before meeting their demise. When the violence finally subsided weeks later, the death toll ranged from 6,000 to 20,000, with some estimates soaring as high as 45,000. This tragic moment has left a lasting scar on the Algerian collective memory. The Mahmar Uprising, a pivotal period in Kenya's history, unfolded amid fierce resistance against the British colonial rule. In 1952, Sir Evelyn Baring, the governor of Kenya, declared a state of emergency in response to the growing Mahmar movement's dedicated efforts to overthrow the colonial regime. London dispatched troops to quell the rebellion, leading to the construction of screening or interrogation camps by the Kenyan administration. These camps were specifically designed to break the will of suspects and approximately 150,000 Kenyans found themselves subjugated to the screening process. During the conflict, a devastating toll was exacted. At least 11,000 rebels lost their lives. Although historians suggest the true death toll could be significantly higher, the detainees in the pipeline camps endured increasingly harsh treatment, with some being forced into confessions. Special courts were established leading to the execution of more than a thousand individuals. Shockingly, official documents revealed that ministers were informed as early as 1953 about forced labour in the camps. Yet officials justified their actions, asserting that if they were to commit immoral deeds, they should do so quietly. This grim chapter in Kenya's past exemplifies the shameful savagery of colonialism. The Maji Maji uprising in Tanganyika was a significant chapter in the resistance against German colonial rule during the late 19th and earlier 20th centuries. Spanning two years and covering an expansive territory of over 10,000 square miles, the rebellion emerged amidst the backdrop of German oppression in Africa. Following the colonization of Tanganyika by Germany in 1898, the African population endured a violent regime marked by high taxation, forced labor, and the ruthless suppression of resistance, even resulting in the killing of resisting kings. The discontent among the Africans intensified during a drought in 1905, fueling resentment and despair. Amidst this atmosphere, a prophet named Kinjiketel Ngwale emerged, offering a glimmer of hope to the oppressed. Ngwale claimed knowledge of a sacred liquid called Maji Maji, believed to render its users impervious to German bullets, armed with arrows, spears, and the supposed protective power of Maji Maji water, warriors from 20 different ethnic groups united against the German colonizers, marking a significant instance of inter-ethnic cooperation against colonial control. 
The rebellion began with attacks on small German outposts, escalating to the destruction of German crops and a series of confrontations culminating in a brutal clash at the Mahenge in August 1905. However, the Germans retaliated with unyielding force launching a devastating counter-offensive on October 21, 1905. The Germans attacked the Nguni people, killing hundreds of men, women and children. This marked the beginning of a ruthless campaign that claimed the lives of an estimated 300,000 Africans by 1907. Although the uprising did not achieve its intended goals, it forced the German government to recognize the potential consequences of their brutality, leading to reforms in their African colonies. Furthermore, the Maja Maja uprising served as a source of inspiration for later freedom fighters in the 20th century, emphasizing the importance of inter-ethnic unity in the struggle against European colonial rule. In the 1880s, Germany established a colony in present-day Namibia, which became the homeland of the African pastoralist communities, notably the Nama people and the Herero, who were cattle herders. German colonists governed with extreme brutality, surpassing even the harsh norms of European colonization. The native Africans faced a grim reality. The livestock and fertile lands were seized and handed over to German settlers, while they themselves were often captured and forced into slave labor. Rampant racial discrimination prevailed, with the indigenous population viewed as a source of cheap labor or marked for extermination by some of the settlers. The situation worsened as native women and girls were routinely violated by the settlers, a crime rarely addressed or punished by the German authorities. Fueled by deep resentment and alienation, the Herero and Nama people rebelled when they learned of the Germans' plans to further dispossess them and force them into reservations. In retaliation, the Germans, led by General Luther von Trotta, orchestrated a merciless campaign. Trotta explicitly aimed for the extermination of the Herero, leading to a brutal confrontation in August 1904, where thousands of unarmed Herero were ruthlessly killed. The survivors faced a horrifying fate as they were pursued into the desert and denied access to water sources, leading to the deaths of thousands from thirst. As for the Nama people, the Germans advocated for their complete annihilation. Those who didn't flee were herded into concentration camps by the face of appalling conditions. We're talking forced labor, beatings, torture, and other despicable acts. In this genocidal onslaught, approximately 65,000 Herero, which was about 80% of the population at the time, and 10,000 Nama, which was about 50% of the people, perished, leaving a chilling legacy brutality and suffering. Leopold II's rule over the Congo from 1885 to 1908 was a period of relentless exploitation and unimaginable suffering for the Congolese people. Although the administration was based in Brussels, the heart of this exploitation was the poor city of Boma, where vast quantities of ivory and rubber were shipped, facilitated by a network of 14 districts. These districts were governed by commissioners directly appointed by the king, who prioritized extraction of ivory and rubber above all else, often acting as colonial administrators and trading agents. The regime of terror imposed by the colonial administration led to frequent mass killings and mutilations, reflecting the violent means employed to enforce the will of the Belgian king and the trading agents over the native population. To safeguard his interests, Leopold employed European mercenaries forming a notorious private army known as the Fourth Public, consistent of up to 19,000 troops. All officers were white, while the rank and file soldiers were black men coerced into service, often kidnapped or bought from tribal leaders. The Fourth Public, acting as both an army of occupation and a police force, crushed numerous rebellions with horrifying brutality. The construction of transport networks facilitated by slave labor further intensified the exploitation resulting in the deaths of millions of workers. Reports from witnesses, including missionaries, writers like Mark Twain and Joseph Conrad, exposed the horrors of everyday life in the Congo. These revelations sparked international outrage, compelling Leopold to relinquish his rule in 1908. Despite this change, the legacy of suffering endured by the Congolese people under Leopold's administration remains a lasting stain on history. So, there you have it. 
Those were some of the worst moments in Africa's colonial history. But which European atrocities do you think should have been included in the list?